Okay. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, morning. Nina's joined online. Okay. I okay, just wanted to read one verse and then um, you know, it's a, it's in First Timothy chapter six and verse twenty, right? Um, First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty. It says, "O Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith." Grace be with you. Amen. Okay. Like if you see the, the beginning of the book and throughout, he says that uh, he is, you know, reiterating to Timothy, you know, you need to um, you need to guard this thing that I committed to you. You need to hold on. You need to teach others, etc. And also, you know, you need to um, uh, rightly divide the word, take heed to yourself, take heed to the good doctrine, etc. So here, you know, in closing this epistle, Paul writes and he says, "Guard what was committed to you." Right. So, um, so I think that's something that uh, that that is reiterated to us also. Guard what was committed to you. So, in terms of call, in terms of gifting, uh, in terms of um, uh, you know those desires that God has put in your heart to pursue. Right. So, guard what was committed to your heart. So what does it mean to guard? Guard means to be watchful, to be alert, to protect. Right? So you don't give up, you don't give in. Um, so and you, you, when it says guard, that also assumes that there will be something uh, or someone, you know, approaching to take, right? To to steal, to take away, right? So. Um, it can be maybe the powers of darkness, Satan, because we know John 10, verse 10 says, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But also, you know, it can be our own flesh, our own distractions, uh, our own lack of focus. Right. So um, again, the reiteration, like guard what was committed to you. You know, if, if God has given you a, a desire, uh, God has given you a uh, a dream, if God has given you or has called you for something, and you know that. Um, guard it, right? Um, maybe write it down, guard it, um, pray through it. And he's saying, you know, avoid the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. So these are things that actually uh, take us away, which cause us to stray away from the truth, right? So he says, by professing that, people have actually strayed away. The gospel is very simple. The truth of what God has called us to do, the kingdom, um, you know, the kingdom call is very, very straightforward. Um, so, you know, that's the, uh, that's the exhortation, right, for us. So let's pray, right? Let's pray and say, Lord, um, you know, um, show me. Have I let go? Or am I in the process of just loosening my grip on whatever you put in my heart, right? Um, enable me to know that. And take a strong hold of that, like Paul says, you know, I lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me. So maybe lay hold of that. Maybe have a strong grip of the call, the dreams, the things that God has put in our hearts. Father, we thank you, Lord, the the desires that you put in our hearts, Lord, for the sake of the kingdom, Lord, the plans, the purposes, the call, Lord, it comes from you. And um, we know that it is good, and we know that it is, Lord, when the, the purpose for which you put it is so that we might pursue it, Lord. And Father God, if, if there are things today, Lord, that seem to come against, that seem to wrestle things out of our hands, out of our hearts, God, we pray that you would uh, highlight that to us, that, 
Lord, even Holy Spirit, even as you give us a check in our hearts, Lord, Master, we pray that we will lay hold of that. We will have a firmer grip on that, Master. And um, yes, Lord, even as we bring that before you in prayer and thanksgiving, Lord, I just pray that it will settle in our hearts, Master, that our focus will be sharper than ever before, God that we will, um, Lord, all kinds of distractions and discouragements, oh God, uh, will just be moved away and so that we can keep our eyes on you and run with endurance, God, the race that is set before us. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, we'll uh, move into uh, sermon preparation, right? Sermon, uh, or uh, diff different types of sermons. So I just wanted to uh, like mention to the online class, like from now on, um, just be um, um, like it'll be good if you can uh, be in a place where you can unmute and speak. Or be in an environment where you can unmute and speak, especially when it comes to uh, maybe sharing whatever you prepared as a sermon, right? So uh, it'll help if you are in that kind of an environment, right, where you can unmute and speak. So just ensure that happens in the forthcoming classes. Um, this is for the online class. Okay. Okay. So um, let me just share the notes and we'll... Okay. Right. So um, different types of sermons. You know, just like how we saw that there were different types of uh, ways to study the Word of God. Um, you know, word study and topical study and um, inductive study and so on. So there are different ways of, uh, different types of sermons, different types of, you know, how you can communicate uh, the message, right? And, uh, well, it can be a mix of this. Uh, why do we have different types? You know, each of these types of sermons, it serves a purpose, right? It serves a purpose so that the hearer is benefited. <clears throat> Right? It's not to showcase the preacher or say, okay, the preacher can do this, preacher can do that. No, so that the hearer, whoever is listening, uh, can be benefited. Okay, And it serves the purpose. Like, for example, um, there, there are different types of sermons. One is a topical sermon. Okay, And then we have textual and expository. We just look at these three. Right. So if you look at the um, topical sermon, like the name suggests, Right, uh, the sermon is based on a topic. Right, it can be, for example, if you say gifts of the spirit, that's a topic, and the sermon is based on that topic, which means that all the points, the main points, or what we call as main divisions, are drawn are based out of the topic. Right, so gifts of the spirit. So the the main points of the sermon could be, you know, what are the gifts of the spirit. Right? Why are the gifts of the Spirit given? Right? And then how do they function? What purpose do they serve? Uh, how does one you know, walk in the gifts of the Spirit? What is required? Qualifications, etc. So these are all, if you, if you notice, everything is based on that particular title, that particular topic. Okay? It's, it's simple. It's just uh, logical. That, that's how it goes. So <clears throat> whenever we, when we have these points, it also means that you can have sub points in the sermon, right? So, uh, sub points in the sermon points. Let, let's say a sermon, uh, Gifts of the Spirit, has five main points. Each of these main points can have further sub points, right? Sub points meaning, let's say a main point is uh, why do we have the Gifts of the Spirit or what are the Gifts of the Spirit? It can have some further sub points like. Uh, what purpose does it serve? You know, why why is it given, etc. You know, it can have further sub points. Uh, simple things, right? So, uh, but the thing is, when we have these sub points, it helps us to go further, deeper, right? Without deviating from the the main point itself. Okay. And uh, if you have five points, it'll be good if each of these five points or five divisions are distinctly different you know they're not talking about the same thing right uh, in the in the sense they're so, talking about the same topic right but a different aspect of the topic okay so um so it's so it, it is something uh, how do we uh, say it? like for example um what are the gifts of the spirit 
um, you know, if, if that main point is what are the gifts of the Spirit, if you're listing it. And uh, the point number two of that sermon is also something close to that. You know, these are also the gifts of the Spirit or, you know, something the way you're listing the gift of the Spirit, then it doesn't really serve the purpose, you know. So it can be a further sub point in the point one itself uh, rather than having it as a separate point. So, I mean, this, see, there's no chapter and verse for this, yeah. right? We also know that when we look at uh, some of Paul's letters, some of his sentences are so long that right? it, it spreads across some two, three verses, right? Have you noticed? Right? It's not ending. The verse has ended, but the, the sentence, the topic is not ended. It just goes, right? So we, we know there's no chapter and verse for this, but it is just a practical consideration that will enable us to prepare and communicate in a way that is easy to understand and easy to retain. So that's that's the whole thing, right? Okay, so this topical sermon. So the topical sermon has advantage in the sense it's um, you know it it focuses on a particular topic. It doesn't deviate from the topic, right? So it narrows down. And it says, okay, gifts of the Spirit, this is what we are looking at, and this is how we'll end it. Okay, So it, that is, uh, it helps in that way. And each of these points, it's good uh, and it's important that the, the, each of these points uh, of that you know, typical sermon, topical sermon, are substantiated with Scripture, like we saw earlier, right? That... There is a text to it. There is, you know, if, if you are saying, okay, these are the gifts of the Spirit, it's important that you point out from Scripture where does it say um, that these are the gifts of the Spirit, right? So uh, it needs to have a text. It needs to have Scripture, which is further substantiating, which, which means which is witnessing or giving proof for that particular point, weightage for that point, okay? Um, if not... You know, the topical sermon also has the danger of uh, where the person or the speaker has a tendency to put in his thoughts or her thoughts, opinions, right? Um, because a topical sermon can are typically like, it can be like a motivational, inspiration sermon also, right? So where you might have the tendency, the speaker might have the tendency to uh, personal views without a biblical framework, etc. It is possible. Um, it also has the tendency to be sometimes shallow uh, because um, there's only so much you can delve into a particular topic at a particular time. right? So you may not be able to cover everything. Um, I'm talking about a sermon, not about a book, right? So there's a time to it, time duration to it. So you may not be able to um, you know, cover everything. So it is possible that it might be shallow, etc. But given all that, it is a good format, especially for a Bible study, you know, uh, especially for a you know gathering, small gathering, especially for um, inspirational exhortations, etc. Right, a topical sermon. It's good to have that, and um, and it can be a uh, you know it, it's important to have topical sermons in a typical you know church sermon calendar. Like you have 52 Sundays in a year, at least 52 Sundays. Uh, uh, and then you might have other times when, you, when the church is gathering. right? So it's good to have a mix of um, topical sermons and the other types of term, sermons as well. Okay. So what are the second ones? The second one is called the textual sermon. Okay. So, um, so when we say textual sermon, I'm sure you've, you know, you've heard speakers come and say, okay, uh, just... Um, they pray, open up, and then say, okay, turn turn with me to, okay, just like how we started today, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20, and then read that, you know, can somebody read? Somebody reads, you know, oh, Timothy, <laughs> from the congregation, the typical reading voice. And then all the points of the sermon are based on the text. Okay, so it's based on the text, not on the topic, but it's based on the text. When I say text, it's based on the scripture, right? It's based on that verse alone. So, point number one, based on the verse. Um, point number two, based on the verse, right? So, um, so based on that verse, um, like for example, if you say First Timothy six and verse twenty, guard what was committed to your trust. So, you know, first point could be about guarding. Second point 
uh, could be about committed, what was committed to your trust. Third point could be about avoiding the profane babblings, etc. And you know, so everything. So the the thing is, some text, some scripture is is packed with a lot of things, lot of uh, lot of insight, lot of revelation. You know, like for example, if you look at First Timothy four and verse twelve, it says, "Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers." You know, that's a that's a sermon by itself. Be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You know, we could, you know, we can just take First Timothy four twelve, excuse me, and um, you know, go there half an hour, forty minutes. You can just use that, right? So some scripture is packed like that, but some scriptures may not be, but it has the truth, and so in that case. If you're having five points in a sermon, a textual sermon, the point number two, three, four may be substantiated with other scripture about you know about the same topic or sorry same verse which is related to the same scripture, right? Um, so uh, point number two can be uh, so borrowed or you use other scripture to substantiate that point. Okay, um, like for example, if you're saying be an example to the believers in word. Okay, so in order to uh, how to be an example in word, in the words that you speak, um, we might use we could use Ephesians four. Okay, Ephesians four, for example, if you do, you, if we take Ephesians four um, and verse twenty eight, I think. Yeah, 29 says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So, you know, so we are actually, you know, drawing out scripture or drawing out verses from other parts of the Bible, other portions, uh, in order to substantiate, in order to give weightage to the that particular verse, be an example in word. How you know to explain how we take all that, right? So that is that is absolutely fine. You know, like all of us, you know, as uh, as students and maybe you know uh, in ministry wise, we might be doing this. You know, we're just talking about just giving some framework to it. We might be doing it naturally, right? So uh, just kind of giving a framework to it. Okay. So it's um, this is another way of um, um, teaching, or this is another way of communicating. Um, uh, in addition to the tech, um, uh, topical sermon, right? The third one is what we would call as an expository sermon. Okay. So, what is an ex expository um, sermon? Now, this this ha has certain advantages um, in the sense the whole, like the audience or the congregation, when you do when you when you actually have an expository sermon, they um, they are educated in the scriptures. Okay. So it's not just picked here and there, but they are actually educated or taught and grounded in the scripture. For example, when you like, for example, what whatever series we are doing in church right now about the Thessalonians, right? When we do Thessalonians, we talk about the background, right? Who wrote, from where did he write, what time period, what made him write, etc., and how. You know how? What was the connection between the audience to whom this episode was written and the author? How did it come about? All those we we learn, which we may not do in a top, topical sermon. We may not, you know, we because the time required is to focus on that topic, to study through the topic. So you won't go into it, right? And if you go into it unnecessarily, it will actually take the focus off the topic, right? It's a topical sermon, so expository is is good. It gives the background. You get to hear. You get to know all that. But the thing is, it's time consuming, right? It is time consuming. It takes time because it can't be done in one sitting. You, it has to be a let's say a series. And uh, if you are a visiting preacher, it's best you know that you can't do a book study, right? Because uh, you'll do some introduction and a few this thing, and then. Few chapters, and then you'll have to move. Right? 
so um so you need to you know choose what you need to do okay so it's it it um, um results in a bible taught bible educated uh, congregation and uh, and the thing is this uh, when it's an expository it is verse by verse right and there'll be many takeaways many points of emphasis right um yes like for example if you if you're doing a bible study on let's say if one corinthians you see that there are different topics within it right um like you'll talk about um, strife you talk about carnality talk about division you know first three chapters then uh, you know how his own personal life and how he is full for the sake of christ chapter 5 you talk about you know some serious immorality issues in the church all that so there are different you know if you if you can give you can, there are different side headings in an expository teaching itself you know there are different uh, you know thing. um so there are different points of emphasis and there are different takeaways or points for application things truths that i can apply in my life okay? um uh, but the thing is this there'll be too many i don't know if you realized you know if you look at uh, let's say first thessalonians 5 itself there are a lot of things now well, let's just take a look at it a lot of emphasis a lot of things that uh, you know you can apply for example first thessalonians 5 is talking about concerning the times and seasons you have no need that i should write to you you perfectly know uh, that the day of the lord comes like a thief in the night etc so being sober being alert that's one thing okay then he goes on to say you know um uh recognize those who labor among you okay these are people who are ministering to you you recognize them uh you know they are there to admonish they are there to rule over esteem them high, uh, rightly etc so highly in love okay then he talks about okay certain practical things be patient with all if there are disorder disorderly or unruly people you need to warn them you see so many points of uh, that you can actually put to practice right uh, things like pray without ceasing in everything give thanks do not quench the spirit so that's the thing of an expository preaching so the thing is if it's a topical sermon you won't actually you may skip certain things you can just say okay you know i'm i'm not going to focus on that um if it's a textual sermon also you may not go into each of these details but if it's an expository sermon you are doing verse by verse so you will have to acknowledge you will have to address those things okay um so that's that's something that we need to that's the reality of it okay so there'll be uh, there won't be like okay altar call one thing <laughs> you you can't you know because the spirit spirit of god would have emphasized several things to uh, you know to people so um so that's the thing expository but it's it's a very good uh, way to uh, for the congregation um to learn scripture to uh, to know the background of the scripture to understand scripture in its context right so it's a journey and and um, like you know typically in a church setting uh, what are some of the emphasis of uh, sermons right one is maybe discipleship okay it could be equipping discipleship it could be like practical living you know marriage parenting uh you know how do i follow jesus in the workplace very practical things right it could be about about uh, evangelism it could be about outreach it could be you know several things that we are emphasizing in these sermons throughout right it could be uh, you know uh, uh, you know preparing for ministry it could be studying or getting deeper in the word things of the spirit the supernatural whatever different points of emphasis so it's good to um, have all this planned saying okay this year let's focus on this you know let's fo- let this be the direction for the congregation right um maybe we could you know this is where the congregation is um i remember you know some of the topics that we are actually looking at we never did it years before you know the, uh, i remember the first time we actually looked at um you know the prophetic it was in a church camp 
not in a uh, not in a you know church sermon sunday sermon it was in a church camp where we took about two days to study about the you know the gifts of word of knowledge word of wisdom and hearing the voice of the spirit and so on so it was a very you know very basic and it was something very new for all of us we were all so excited uh, you know right very new and a lot of questions right so uh, we dealt with that so then i see that when we uh, whenever there's a teaching on the prophet it's at a different level it's it's as if you know several layers have been added several layers of revelation several layers of you know even understanding experience everything has been added so you see it's a journey that has been made right for the for the church by the church uh, which has been part so we can think of those right when it, when it comes to sermons when it comes to planning for sermons right okay different between textual and expository sermon i think it's very um, very plain very clear um, the one main difference would be that the text can be a textual sermon can be based on just one verse or a set of verses right whereas the expository sermon can be a, a sizable passage or it can be a few chapters or it can be the entire book itself right so that's the main thing and for a textual sermon most of the points uh well it could be from the the verse itself right but like how we looked at you know first timothy 4:12 in order for the points to be substantiated there could be other scripture verses right which are pointing to that which are adding weight to that right um but in a expository sermon because you are looking verse by verse uh, most of the like the text or the scripture is from that passage itself it's contained in that passage there'll be very few cross references if at all right okay any question sorry um so, right now what we're doing in church yeah that is expository Expo so it, it's a verse by verse slow thing. now what we would be looking this sunday coming sunday would be a topical so it's about the power of the gospel um what's the most exciting <laughs> easiest no there's no there's no question of easy or difficult challenging it's the same yeah like no since you're saying easy um it's uh, in terms of audience response and um see for the speaker the audience response also matters right so because uh, the thing is if the audience is somewhere lost if they're not following then you're going to put in more efforts to draw them like you can't be passive and just go okay if you're listening you listen otherwise you know you can't do that right you want them with you in the journey so um yeah so, so but in the expository sermons there are chances that people get lost yeah so that's the thing because there are too many too much information it seems it feels like too much information especially if a person is not uh, like not inclined to study the word right um we can make it fun for them we can make it interesting but if you're not really inclined to you know study the word of god then we might lose them so in that sense it's a difficult when you do an expository sermon and a topical sermon can be you can preach it <laughs> you know everybody say hallelujah hallelujah everybody say you know turn to your neighbor and say you know fire and everybody says fire <laughs> you know that's what i'm talking about you can do all that <laughs> but you can't do that in an expository you know so right it's more of a teaching thing format yeah it's true online students any questions um yeah yeah so so like uh, most sundays because the the idea is uh, okay the question rinchan asked is like um do all the pastors uh, just come in on sunday morning and then open the <laughs> sermon outline and preach it do you prepare at all well uh, but i just want to tell you that preaching 
from an outline that is already prepared is uh, more difficult than something that you prepared. See, when you prepare, it's part of you. Okay, you you you've prepared. It's part of you now. It has to become part of you before you actually make it part of for others, right? Otherwise, you can't. It'll be like uh, you'll be looking at it. You'll be saying something. It's it doesn't. You don't have the connect, and so others are not going to have the connect. So it's much more. When it comes to easy, difficult, that's one thing. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, yes. Uh, like most Sundays, because we are doing a series, the the idea is that all of uh, it comes from the structure. Okay, I know it's a long answer, but it comes from the structure in the sense the way we look at it is it is one church, many locations, right? So it's not different churches in different places. It's one church, many locations. So the idea is that everyone, all people in the locations grow together in the same way you know so which means it's not like addressing one topic here one topic there which we do certain times and there are sundays when like everybody is preparing their own sermons and yeah and there are times when there have been times when apart from pastor like one of us prepared and shared the outline which is also difficult <laughs> right, because you have to do it way ahead of time. You can't do it till Sunday morning. It has to be done way ahead of time. So I've done that. I think maybe once, twice. Uh, I think it's tough to yeah because everybody needs to prepare. You need to give them time. Yeah, this is the thing that um, that each of us will yeah grow together. So and the thing is, the main points are there, the main study is there. There could be additional things, like I could receive, or I, I might feel like, OK, uh, this needs to be emphasized more, so I could share that. Uh, and of course, the way it is communicated might be different, right? Uh, definitely. From the notes. Uh, you know, sermon notes. It uh, it will only be given about the topic name, outline, and the references. But how we preach on it for that also, you guys have to prepare, right? Like yeah, exactly. what you have to like yeah. based on this from this reference and on this topic, what you have to share. You have to study. Prepare. It's not like yeah, yeah. Uh, it was also already given that you have Absolutely. to share this. Also. Yeah, it was the outline that was given to you, and you have to prepare on that outline and preach. Mm -hmm. So, so the thing is, I think Anand's question is why you know why can't you just have a topic? Why can't you all prepare? That was your, and then share. You know, the thing is, it'll be different emphasis. Each person, each location, pulling in different directions. That could happen. Right? I might not, I might not give a whole perspective. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. See, if it's a if it's a expository teaching, it's fine. You know, we can actually do that. But if it's any other teaching on certain topics, it's best it is kind of a collective thing. Right? We've had different formats. We've had where we've had a call and then like you know each person's sharing the. It's all very time consuming, and then we didn't. We kind of said, okay, settled with this model for now. Yeah. Okay, there's another question. Jackin, uh, there's been a time when based on audience response, they showed disinterest like yawning, sleeping, yeah. and you had changed the way of speaking or sharing the thought different. Do we need to do that? It actually disrupts our flow of thoughts as well, right, as a speaker. Yeah, yeah, that can be a challenge. Like I had a funny moment where, uh, you know, this person slipped right through <laughs> the sermon. But the funny thing is, after the sermon, he came and shook hands and said, "Thank you for the message." <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, so so when people do that, um, like initially, it used to, uh, it can be disturbing, right? You you see that, and you're like, "Oh man, I need to do something to wake them up, etc." Um, but then, over a period of time, you realize that you, you just go beyond that. You know, the thing is, every time if you're disrupting, slowing down, you know. Uh, addressing that, you know, or telling the people, okay, wake up your neighbor, say something to them, give them a nudge. It, yeah, like Jekin is saying, you know, it, it just disrupts the flow. It's bet better to just keep going. And also, I found out, you know, some people, they've taken medication, you know, the night before and they are 
because of that, you know, something to do with the body. They have taken some medicines and they are sleeping. One person, you know, he's he's just uh, he was a bit working. He just went home, changed, came. Yeah, this guy's been working for I don't know, I don't know how he's working like twenty hours every day, like very tough, tough season. So he comes, he sits. <laughs> the thing is, he sits in the first row, and he's like, you know, dozing off. So, yeah, some things like that. So yeah, to so answer you, Jackin, yeah, just it's best to keep going, um, unless there is a, you know serious disruption, like kids screaming, somebody's phone going off over and over again. You know, you can actually address that. You had a question, Rinchen? Yeah. I just wanted to ask, like, uh, okay, so you guys prepare and do all this. Uh, like, was there a time, like, when uh, maybe the Holy Spirit um, just speaks to you to talk about something else, to preach something else? Don't talk. Don't preach on Thessalonians this Sunday like that, huh? <laughs> Spirit, like, gives you something else. Like, uh. I want them to hear this. Hmm. The whole sermon itself. That has never happened to me. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it, it happened in the sense, see, it was not like a, it was like a house meeting. It has never happened in a church setting. It was a house meeting. I went prepared for something. Then I just started uh, like wishing them and talking to them about something. And I realized that it was going in a different direction. And then the whole message changed. You know, so that has happened, but uh, yeah, in a church Sunday service kind of setting, it, for me, it does not happen. I don't know. Okay, somebody's put their hand up. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, so, one more thing is like when you are preaching, uh, and if you felt like you need to release a word or something mm -hmm. like a prophetic word, uh, something like that, would you? Um, wait till the end of the sermon that needs to be finished or if you are like so much uh, you know inspired or highlighted like God is like telling no this is this is now you have to say would you like uh, breaking the pattern because there is what you say uh, there is a pattern that's been followed for the service after this yeah. after this after this so yeah. So um so the you've received the prophetic word, but when do you release it? Right? The timing of it. Um normally I would um, you know it depends, you know, like uh, maybe there's something that Lord put in my heart to share. Maybe it was during the worship time, maybe it was during the you know, various points in the service, just made a note of just uh, held it in my heart. And uh, normally I would you know wait for a ministry time to release it. Uh, normally, I would do that unless um, uh, it is something very, very urgent and tied to the to the message itself. You know, the maybe some point that we are sharing, and if that word uh, maybe the Lord is putting in our hearts for you know for that particular point, you know, at that point, it uh, unless uh, it is for that. Uh, normally, I would wait till the end of the message or if there's a ministry time to to release that word uh, because there uh, what i've realized is also once once you release that word during a time of ministry then there are more uh, words that the holy spirit drops in your heart you know it's a, it's a time for like uh, ministering to people serving uh, different needs and then you know several aspects maybe like healing maybe encouragement and i've uh, just seen that there's a flow, so uh, yeah. Unless it's something to do with the message, that theme, uh, and uh, the Lord inspiring something in your heart, I would wait till the ministry time to release. Okay, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. But the thing is to not forget it. You know, that's the thing, uh, because you you're talking about so many things, you're thinking about so many things, and then uh, um, we may we should make it a point not to forget it but the beautiful thing is the holy spirit reminds us you know when we go into a time of prayer and then there is a reminder of that again um of that impression what you saw 
um there's a reminder of that so yeah like for example once it happened as i was driving to church you know and one traffic signal i saw this thing um so i didn't i just okay i just kept in my heart okay lord you know whatever it is you just give me more on it then shared the word i think it was christmas time shared the word whatever and then during the ministry time again the lord reminded me of that you know what i saw on the signal so uh, i kind of shared that and um, and then after the service that the a few people who came and said okay that, uh, that that is like something very accurate and minister to them etc so yeah so the thing is to uh one is to keep it in our hearts and also depending on the holy spirit you know he he reminds us he will do that so yeah okay so mechanics of sermon construction let's just look at one we have five more minutes right we let's look at um, uh, one thing you know ch charles haron spurgeon a brilliant uh, preacher uh, like um, i don't know if this audio it was uh, you know many years ago right so i've read his messages and brilliant okay some of the sermons uh, it has been written down so so he says habitually to come into the pulpit unprepared is unpardonable presumption okay so many times we think okay i it's actually a misapplication of the verse you know do not premeditate on what you will speak beforehand right um, you know don't think about what you have to speak don't plan about what you have to speak the holy spirit will give you at that moment what you need to speak yeah go for it <laughs> okay so that verse is about uh, what the lord jesus spoke right um about to his disciples and it's in the context of uh, persecution when you're persecuted when you're brought before the leaders um when you need to no, don't don't think don't worry you go there and the holy spirit will actually give you words and it happens right peter john they're in the temple they are between you know before all the elders of the temple leaders and the he actually you know talks about uh, he shares the word so about the cornerstone and all that uh, so uh, so misapplication of that would be okay i'm going to be spirit led i'm just going to go right maybe there are times when it happens right like for example uh, you could be in a gathering and somebody says pastor you share okay, you're there you went actually for, to have dinner <laughs> okay <laughs> it was they said they invited you for dinner okay you're going there you you you're not even carrying your bible and then uh, and now pastor will share a word and you are completely taken aback you're like what do and then you know quickly lord please something and then you you know you share and so that, that that's fine but then to go without preparation um is is not the best thing to do right okay so um it's it's good to prepare it's good to and then the thing is this you know our heart is prepared our heart is prepared when we prepare you know we are engaging with the word of god we are praying through our heart is being prepared and the lord drops our, or the lord puts in our heart what um gives a burden gives um, you know he knows the need we actually experience god's heart for the people right and all that happens and and our own hardness of heart you know all that is broken when we when we prepare so it's not just okay what is the one what are the five things that i want to say it's not just that and it's being in the presence of god where god prepares us as a messenger right in addition to sharing what the message needs to be right okay so um okay so, so certain uh, if you say okay what are the parts of a sermon the first one would be a title okay like uh, the title of the sermon now uh, the title actually it states um, it's like an advertisement for the sermon in these days right if you, and because we i'm sure we scroll through we watch a we see a video it's got a interesting title and we click on it right so it's a it's a advertisement for the sermon right now uh, we also need to understand like in today's time you know we look at a little bit about what the title can reflect you know content of the message and etc in today's time it makes sense um you know i've always thought of having giving a very wacky title you know something creative something um something that you know draws people's attention but that 
is very short lived it's it's for that moment it's for that week because if that very creative title very intriguing title very puzzling title you know if that is not searched for now most of the messages are online right if that is not searched for if people are searching for a particular topic because you gave your title to be so creative and you know so uh, if it's not searched for then it's a waste it has served a purpose for that particular sunday maybe that particular week but the the life of that particular content is not there okay so okay we we'll look at it more in the coming days coming class okay thank you um so just wanted to say that next week we will have those um, we'll have the first of our tests it will be online for the online students and online for all of us in person also yeah it will be so it will be uh, in the thing so maybe what we can do is have the class and then the second class is free right so if for in person students we can have it the second hour or maybe on a tuesday or wednesday tuesday preferably right okay thank you god bless bye bye